I asked him the other night, I thought I knew, but I wanted to ask to be sure. Uh, you did over seven years in prison? No, no, no. That's federal prison? No, no. Was that state They're never too far gone. Yeah. Yeah. From a prison cell to a hospital room, they're never too far gone. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm just thankful that he can do it. Yeah. Don't you right. give up on your family, on your yeah. friends. You say they're lost cause. It don't get no more lost cause than that. Right. Yeah. That's right. The Lord still doing miracles. I, I preached it a few weeks ago on the greatest miracle in the Bible. Yeah. I said it wasn't the parting of the Red Sea. It wasn't the fourth man in the fiery furnace. I said the greatest miracle in the Bible is that God would save me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 That's the greatest miracle. Yeah. That God would save me. Yeah. I appreciate that, brother. That's to me. Yeah. Hang in there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Pray on. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Cole was just this man. You enjoyed that good testimony, say amen. 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 Years ago, we used to say from the mire to the choir. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah. He's a great big God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You pray for these girls as it's sad. Have your way, Lord. Come on, come on, God.
to rescue and redeem your yeah. never dying yeah. soul. Yeah. And Jesus knew yeah. that. Yeah. And so Jesus yeah. took it upon himself. Yeah. After being born of the earth, live a sinless life. I went to the cross, yeah. suffered, bled, and died. And the wrath of God that you and I so richly deserve. Yeah. Right. Instead of dumping it on yeah. us, right. he yeah. poured out. Yeah. <laughs> My, what grace. 
I what mercy. Yeah. What kindness. Yeah. I was an enemy. Yeah. I didn't want God or the things of God. Yeah. 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 But God showed up in this yeah. world. Yeah. 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 Drew me to himself in love. Yeah. And saved me. Yeah. Right. Amen. Brother Luis stood up just a second ago, raised his hand. And I thought from a prison cell to the front row in the back. Yeah. 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 I thought God took me out of a bar right. stool. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Let me sit right here where I'm standing. Yes, sir. Yeah. He pulled me out of the hell holes of this world. Yes, sir. And saved yeah. me. Place me right here. Yeah, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. Right. The Holy Ghost dealt with my heart, told me I was a sinner, told me I was lost, told me I was going to hell, and I believed it. Right. Then he pointed me to Calvary and said, that's the only hope you've got. Yeah. And there at 203 Valletta Drive, apartment number four, I bowed my unworthy me. And I trusted Jesus as my Savior. Yeah. Right. And I'm telling you, God changed my life yeah. from that day to this. That's right. uh, when I got saved, I didn't know nothing. I just knew I was going to hell and didn't want to go. And I knew Jesus died for me. But over the years... Yeah. The Lord has revealed Himself to me, and it means a whole lot more, more to me tonight. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm getting a little closer. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just grateful that God said it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Listen, you don't have to worship like I do. That's right. But don't hinder me. Amen. I'm going to enjoy it. Amen. Now you might be a little different, and that's all right. We don't mind, but we're going to enjoy it. Amen. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad heaven's my home, and I'm glad the Holy Ghost will meet with us. Amen. 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 Good spirit, God. And tonight it's a, again a, a real honor and a privilege to have uh, one of my dear friends, Brother Mike Martin. I'm grateful for my gosh, what preaching he's done. Yeah. Boy, mercy. Wednesday night was wonderful. Last night was even better. And so I want Pastor Mark to come. And uh, you preach, Brother Mike. Make yourself home. Amen. Hey. Amen. I, uh, I trust Brother Parker with all my heart. I just want to make sure that you want me to do it. Yes. Yes. Let me just say this before I, before I get to the message, if I can. For every one of Brother Luis, there's hundreds. Oh, yeah. There's hundreds that are still locked up right. and yeah. hundreds that are in the ground. Yeah. He's one of a large crew that yeah. went down for the same crime. Yeah. And God was merciful to him. Yeah. And for every one that God is merciful to, there's hundreds that reject the mercy of God yeah. Yeah. and end up in destruction. Yeah. 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 That's right. And to say that you're here listening to this one means that God is doing something for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For you to be in this same place to hear. The Bible says this. For all is the way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wide is the gate. Yeah. Yeah. That leads to destruction. And many there be that go in there. There's thousands of people yeah. who are on their way to right. a devil's hell. Right. Yeah. They'll die and they'll burn in hell forever. Yeah. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads right. to life. Right. And few there be right. that find it. And you find yourself in a place tonight where God has seen fit to put on display His bountiful mercy and grace. It is no coincidence that you are witnessing what God has done in this man's life. And what God can do in your life. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't think I, let me say it this way. The odds are against you yeah. 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 surviving out in the world. Right. Right? Right. The statistics tell us that, that surviving on your own, it, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. And yet God has seen fit to put you in this place Amen. to feel the presence of God from the beginning of the, the congregational music, the special yeah. music, the testimony. And so, my friend, don't take lightly. Amen. Don't take lightly what's happening right now. That's right. right. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to follow the way. You do that. You do that. You're absolutely fine. I've, I've been praying all day and uh, trying to follow the, the direction of the Lord and go, go where He wants us to go, but I, I really I feel I feel in my heart that there's 
at least one, maybe two in here tonight that God's been dealing with over a period of time. And uh, tonight, tonight's the night that God's trying to get your attention. Amen. Yeah. And we don't we don't believe in coincidences. Yeah. Right. We believe in divine providence. Right. Yeah. There is a God up in heaven who knows yeah. all and sees all yeah. and directs us. No coincidence that Brother Louise wrote with us. No coincidence of the way that things have just been working out. And it's right. no coincidence, my friend, that you are here tonight. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I wonder what the Lord wants to do with you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I have a long, drawn-out message that we're just going to skip all of. And if you look at Acts chapter 27, yeah. Acts 27, it's a familiar passage. Paul was on his way to pay for... <laughs> Uh, what Rome uh, is considers a crime, they're going to they're gonna get rid of Paul for preaching the gospel. And uh, he's on his way, and he finds himself in a shipwreck, and uh, you, the, the storm is so big that it has a name. It's called Euroclidon or Euroclidon, however you want to say it. And Paul sees some things in the passage, but I want to wanted to draw something to you really quick, if I could. Uh, I think it goes right along with what's already happening tonight. But the Bible says uh, he, in verse number 14, uh, let's back up a little bit. Uh, verse number 10, and he says unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the laying of this ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurions believed the master and the owner of the ship more than the things which were spoken by Paul. Then we go find out in verse number 14 that they loose and they get out into the ocean and sure enough the storm comes just like Paul said it would and troubles and heartaches and damage and they end up losing the ship. Paul says here, I perceive that this voyage will be much hurt. Amen. We see the perception of the preacher and God gives the man of God, this uncanny ability to see things that he's not a ship master, he's not a ship owner, he's not a meteorologist, he can't read the yeah, weather of the yeah, sky. Yeah. But God gives him some wisdom and God gives him some understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that there's trouble ahead. I'm not a meteorologist, but I can tell there's some storms about to blow through your life. God gives the man of God some wisdom, some perception beyond his years. Even yeah. though he knows nothing about shipping, and even though he knows nothing about sailing, he yeah. gives advice and says, we ought not to take this voyage. I perceive that there's danger around the, the bend. Now I say to you that God has put a man of God in your life yeah. who preaches to you Sunday right. morning and Sunday night yeah. and Wednesday, and he may not know everything that's going on in your life, but God gives him a perception to see What's going on? Yeah. And when you don't heed the warning, danger is around the corner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The title of my thought tonight is this, Storms That You Don't Have to Go Through. Yeah. Right. Or simply said, you could have avoided that. Yeah. 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 You could have avoided that. Paul tells them here uh, that uh, he perceives that, that, the, that, the, that the voyage, that the trip, that if they lose from this place, it would, it would cause much heartache, much damage, and much loss. But the Bible clearly tells us that they, they take the professional's advice, they don't listen to the man of God, and they end up in destruction. But may I say to you tonight that if you're here, that the warning is being given out, God is calling, God is drawing, God is trying to do something, and there could be some storms that are ahead of you. If you think it's bad now, honey, you better buckle down. You keep going the way you're going. You keep living the way you're living. You keep acting the way you're acting. And I'm no meteorologist, but I can tell you the clouds are starting to gather. The thunder's about to roll. You better do something while God's giving you an opportunity. Yeah. You don't have to go through the storm. This is what Paul says I could have avoided. Yeah. Brother Louise and I were sitting in the hotel room 
praying and talking and getting ready for tonight. And I'm asking him if he's ready. And he's asking me if I'm ready. And, and we're back and forth. And he says that very statement. He says, you know, I was thinking about what I could have avoided. Yeah. Had I heeded the warnings yeah. when they came. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. You're here tonight. And God's ringing your bell. You're here tonight. And God's been dealing yeah. with you. Yeah. Not just tonight. Not just last night. Not just this week of revival. But maybe it's been a week, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. God's been dealing with you. God's been doing something in your heart. The messages have been right up your alley. God's been trying to get your attention. Yeah. And there's the winds are blowing all around us. We've got troubles in our life. We've got heartaches on every side. We're easily distracted. We're hard-headed. We have to learn things the hard way. And I'm here to make it as plain as I possibly can. Yeah. God is trying to get your attention tonight. God's trying to ring your bell tonight. You don't have to learn the hard way. I had a grandma that would come every Wednesday night and pray for her grandson and her granddaughter. They came from a hard life, a tragedy happened, and every night this grandma would pray and cry and pray and cry for her little granddaddy, her grandson and her granddaughter. She tried every time she could to get them into the house of God. Every time we had EBS, every time we had a food function, she was always trying to get them into the house of God. And I watched them as they began to grow. And every Wednesday night, every Wednesday night without fail, she prayed for her granddaddy. She prayed for her granddaddy. She wanted her grandson to come and know God. She wanted her granddaughter to serve and love God. And she was faithful praying, faithful praying, faithful praying. When he wanted to do his own thing, he wanted to live his own way. He thought he knew better. He thought he could figure it out for a moment's help. Yeah. He began hanging out with the wrong crowd. And she would tell him over and over and over, you need to be right. You need to get back to the house of God. But he just wanted to do his own thing. Right. Yeah. One night he's out riding with his friends. Just having a good time. Getting drunk. Doing drugs. They decided to break into a house. They thought nobody was there. Nobody was home. They break into the house. One thing leads to another. Turns out there's an invalid cripple in the house. Shots are fired. The invalid's beat up. The cops show up. He's arrested. Then me and his grandma have to go down to the prison house and talk to him through plexiglass walls. And his grandma's crying in tears and I'm sitting there looking at him and uh, we watched this process as it began to play out. He tried to swear up and down that he had nothing involved. He was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. But everybody in the car and everybody in the house all went down for the same cry. Right. Then we watched week by week as we go back and visit as that place began to change him. Yeah. As his face began to harden, as things began to show up, as his hair began to change, tattoos started popping up, bruises on his face, and we watched as he spiraled further and further and further. And I'll never forget the last time I sat across the glass room and I thought to myself, you did not have to go there. You could have avoided this. You did not have God's trying to show you. God's trying to show you. You don't have to go through that right. to learn. Amen. Right. Amen. Paul said, "I perceive. I perceive that if you don't, if you, if you take this trip, if you make this journey, if you continue on the path that you're on, there's destruction ahead. Yeah. Yeah. There's destruction ahead. Yeah. And there's some things you don't have to go through. Oh, yeah. There's some storms that you can avoid." Paul, in the passage here, he says, I perceive that there will be much damage. And he pleads with them. Then later on, he says to them, he says later on in verse number 21, he says, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. Amen. Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. And not have loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and this loss. As a pastor, one of the hardest things to do, as a preacher, one of the hardest things to do 
is to preach to people and preach to them and warn and pray for them and cry and pour out your heart and be in meetings just like this when you can feel the presence of God. The last two nights I felt God right there on the edge wanting to do something, wanting to move. Tonight you have felt Him. You have recognized that He's in this place. You know that God's doing something, wants to do something. He's right there on the very edge. But you're too stubborn. You're too hard. You're too messed up. You think you'll figure it out yourself and you're going to go ahead and travel down the path that you're already traveling and you're going to end in wreck and you're going to end in ruin and somewhere some preacher someday is going to say you did not have to go through that storm. Yeah. That's one that you could have avoided. Yeah. Life is hard enough. Yeah. Life is hard enough to not have to go through storms that I could avoid. Yeah. Yeah. I cause enough. I've got enough troubles in my life I don't need to add to them. Yeah. If you're here tonight, sir, if you're here tonight, man, it is not by coincidence right. that God brought you to this place this evening. Yeah. Right. Right. And the warning is being given. You can receive the same grace. You can receive the same pardon. You can receive the same help. Or you can reject it. Yeah. And I perceive you're going to be in a world of hurt. Yeah. Paul then stands on the mast of the ship while the storm is howling and raging and he says but be of good cheer I believe God he says be of good cheer gentlemen I believe in God sir I don't know what you're going through young man, young lady I don't know what you're dealing with I don't know what heartaches or what storms are blowing in your life. So I don't know who you're praying for. I don't know what, what that, that heartache is near and near your heart. But may I say something to you? You can be of good cheer tonight because I do believe in God. I'm glad that there is a God in heaven who is looking down. And it's no accident. It's no chance that they're here tonight. That God's doing something tonight. I want you to put your faith and trust in Him. Knowing that God is in control. And you're here and you're perfect night yeah. to give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are some storms you don't have to go through. There are some heartaches that you don't have to live through. There are some things you could avoid if you heed to the Word of God. Right. If, you hear to, if you heed to the preaching, if you heed to the warning that God is giving you today. Yeah. yeah. How about it tonight? Amen. How about it tonight? Preacher, it'll be all right if she comes back to the piano. Come back to the piano. Whatever girls y'all want to come, come back. If you've got a song in your heart. God's doing something tonight. God wants to do something tonight. He's right, He's right on the edge. He is right on the edge. He wants to help you tonight. If you're lost here and you don't know for sure, if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven when you die, may I say to you, sir, may I say to you, young lady, God is calling you tonight. He wants you to know. He wants you to know that you can put your faith in Him, that you can put your trust in Him. That it means it's not religion that we're not talking about. It's not turning over a new leaf, but it's a relationship with the God of all glory who loves you and died for you and cares for you enough to send me in your way to warn you of the dangers and the heartache. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe you have a, you're a young man. I know what it's like to be a young married man. Right. Be on my own, have my own family to take care of. Get out of the world and be around the world. I know what it's like. Grow up in the house of God. My testimony is different. I, I didn't get mixed up in drugs. I didn't get mixed up in alcohol. I didn't live that life. I grew up in the house of God. I, I grew up in the church. And I got married as a young man and got my own house and my own life. And the world was presented to me. The heartache was presented to me. Troubles was shown to me. And I, I began to, to question the things of 
God. I began to question uh, what, what I had heard and believed and saw all my life. I know what it's like to be a young married man. I know what it's like to be pulled by the world, to be pulled by the music, to be pulled by the friends uh, there at, at, at the job. I know what it's like to get my mind and my heart so twisted and to get cold and callous and get away from God. Maybe the warnings to you tonight, you better be careful. You walk down that road and there's damage. There's a storm ahead that you could avoid. What's God dealing with you tonight? What warning? Oh, why he's passing by. Why he's near. Why, 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 why God? Well, God is calling you. Don't refuse Him tonight. Don't refuse Him tonight. There are some storms you don't have to go through. There are some heartache that you don't have to endure. There are some things that you can avoid if you just give your heart to Him. You don't have to learn the hard way. Don't resist Him tonight. As the girls begin to sing, don't resist and let's all stand.
want to make sure you understand that the Lord dealing with you tonight does not mean you will always. That's right. Do That's right. And while He's dealing with you, yes. that is the time. To yes. Do. Don't waste it. If you reject and say no, I'll do it later. There may not be a way. You don't get saved when you want to. You get saved as the Lord deals with you. Yep. And while He's dealing with you, I'd come. Because you have no guarantee that He'll ever deal with you again. That's right. And so while He's dealing with you, I beg you to come. And so tonight, I'm going to have them sing that one verse. One verse. This is your verse. If I could come back to your pew and take the first step for you, I would. Every time. But I can't. This thing ain't between you and your grandma, you and your mama, you and your brother. This thing's between you and God. That's right. It's an individual. That's right. And tonight, you have heard enough, felt enough, yes. and yes. seen enough. Yes. To know that you need it. <laughs> oh, don't waste it. Tonight you're not saved. You need to be saved. Tonight you're not where you're supposed to be if you are saved. The Lord's giving you an opportunity. And it may be your last. God is reaching out His hand. Do not slap it away and say, I'll do what I want. Right. There's danger. They're going to say one verse. Don't squander this opportunity. Can you imagine dying and going to hell and this night being replayed over oh God, please. Oh, oh, please. in your mind for all of eternity? And you'll say, I did not have to come. God did everything and gave me every opportunity. Tonight, there's no guarantee. So while the Lord is nudging you, speaking to your heart, come during this. Time. This is it. It's all there is. One verse. And if nobody moves, we're going to be dismissed. Tonight, I ask you to do business.
tonight I love you. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. The truth is there's a heaven and there is a hell. Yes. And the only way to avoid going to hell, it's not being a good person, it's not joining the church, it's not being baptized. The only way to avoid going to hell right. is to trust Jesus Christ yeah. and His sacrifice at the cross yeah. as payment for your sin. Right. That's the only way. You can be religious, you can be baptized, you can uh, do good works, you can work in a soup kitchen, and none of that is sufficient to get you to hell. Amen. Amen. The only hope you've got tonight is what Jesus did at the cross. Right. Yeah. Where He suffered bled and died to pay for your sins. And when you put your confidence, hope, and trust, and faith in that and that alone, that's how one is born again. Amen. That's how you're made fit. Amen. Amen. I love you. But you're playing a dangerous game. Yes. Amen. Yes. Tomorrow is not promised. Right. I would get saved when I knew I could. Yeah. Not when I thought of mine. Enjoy the good saying and enjoy the service tonight, say. Amen. Amen. Appreciate the good grace of God. And so tonight as we bow our heads, we're going to close. Listen, the clock's ticking. The sand is running out of the hour. If you need to come, come back. We don't need 75 verses of just as I am. You just come right now. So how do you see God? This is, listen, the window is closing. Come on. Come on. We'll wait on you. It's Friday night. We ain't no hurry. Come on. You said we're fixing to dismiss. Trust me, you're worth waiting on. Yeah. yeah. So come on. Come on. Come on. One of the hardest things as a pastor is to watch people stand in a pew like this. Yeah. Yeah. And watch him go. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly yeah. right. A heartbreak. A heartbreak. Go for it. Oh, God. Reaps my heart. Oh, Jesus. The greatest thing ever happened to me was the day I got saved. There ain't nothing better than knowing Jesus. Tonight, I know the Holy Ghost is still in your heart. Listen, I, I, I cannot, I, I cannot uh, just turn my back and say, just fly and do what you want. No, 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 come. Come now. Sing that first verse one more time, please. I once stood as a sword.
Brother Mike has said everything. Uh, the Spirit of God has met with us. The Lord did His part and brought you. The Lord did His part and showed up. You've heard of the grace of God through Brother Mike. Yes. You've heard of oh, it. We've done everything that we can do. The lights are on, the bills are paid. Everybody's done their part. But you. And tonight, we can sing all night. But tonight, you need to say, You're lost. You need Jesus. You're a sinner. way to avoid an eternity in hell is to know Christ as your son. You say, well, I just, it doesn't matter what you believe. I, 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 got, I got 75 verses of scripture to prove you wrong. There ain't many ways to heaven. There's one. Right. That's it. That's it. Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. Right. And by the way, if there was any other way for you to get to heaven, why would Jesus go through all that He went through right. on the cross? Yeah. Why would He do that if there was some right. other way? You know why He did that? Because there is no other way. Right. He loves you. He died for you. And tonight I'm praying for you. And tonight I ask you to please come back tomorrow night. We'll see what the Lord has for us. And tonight I'm praying for your soul. I'm praying that the Lord follows you out of this place. Continues to work on you. So, the saints have prayed. The Spirit has moved. The sermon has been made. There's nothing else for you. So, we'll pray for you. We want you to come back. We love you. We want you to come back. 7.30 tomorrow. 7.30 tomorrow. Alright? And so, tonight we're, we're fixing to be dismissed. And uh, it's early for a Friday night. And so, come around and shake Brother Mike's hand. Uh, shake Brother Luis's hand. My, what grace. What the, listen, can I say this? I'm thankful for what God did do tonight. Ain't you? Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate the goodness of God. So we're fixing to be dismissed, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna pray. We want you to come back. You enjoyed the you enjoyed the meeting so far. Say amen. 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 Absolutely. All right. Now tonight we're gonna bow our heads. We're gonna go to the Lord in prayer. And we're gonna ask God's blessing uh, on the service tomorrow night. Ask God's safety on the trip home to, tonight. And uh, so uh, I'd like to ask you to pray. Pray for folks that God will have His will in His life. Just as He disarmed you and He disarmed me, He can disarm me. So let's pray. Father, thank You for Your presence. Thank You for the testimony that we've heard. My, what grace, Lord, to go from the gutter, Lord, to sitting on the front row uh, in a Baptist church. Lord, you have not only told us of your grace, you have demonstrated it in the life of Brother Louis. Lord, I thank you for these girls, the good singing. Thank you for the good Holy Ghost that spoke to my heart, encouraged me, helped me, and loved on me. Thank you for your presence. Father, appreciate Brother Mike being obedient and doing exactly what you told him to do. Father, thank you for those hearts that have been touched. Lord, and I pray for those who are resistant. Pray the Spirit of God deal with them. Pray you'd follow them home. Pray you make their pillow lumpy. I pray they wouldn't sleep good. I pray the Holy Ghost would bring them out. You'd bring them. You'd save them. Thank yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, that you might get all the honor and all the glory. And so, Lord, we pray for them. You'd help them. Have mercy on them. Just like you did us. Lord, pray you bless the meeting tomorrow night. I pray, Father, that the Spirit of God would meet with us You'd help us and draw us up close. Thank you for the great meeting we've had so far. 
Lord, we pray you'd go with us now. Would you keep your hand over us, protect us, keep us safe as we travel? Father, whatever you do for us, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. We love you. In Christ's name, we ask it. And for his dear sake, we pray it. Amen. Amen. Amen.